closet to as big as a one-car garage. All of our units are inside and climate controlled with 24-hour access and security. Our leases run month to month, so you're not locked into a long-term commitment, giving you the flexibility to move your belongings out the minute you purchase your new home. Stop by today or give us a call. 530-8003. That's 530-8003. Jessup Premium Storage. The cool, clean, and secure. When you have an accident, you, not the insurance company, chooses the body shop, and you only need one estimate. All you have to do is call Jerome Riles at BNC Collision Center in downtown Scriven to deal with the adjusters and insurance company. Whether it's a little ding or a major crash, that BNC Collision Center across from Wazen Cabinet Shop in Scriven deal with the insurance company so you don't have to. Call them at 579-2274. That's 579-2274. Merry Christmas from Mike Birch Ford and Blackshear. Come enjoy the Ford Holiday Sales Event. Our gift to you is 0% for 60 months plus $1,000 rebate on new Focus Fusion and Escape. Come by the best-selling truck in the world. Up to $10,000 off on select 2015 Ford F-150s. There is excitement in the air at Mike Birch Ford. Come see our brand new dealership. Christmas time is here. Buy a new Ford and we'll give you five free oil changes while in factory bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty. At Mike Birch Ford, you can save money now. Ford Holiday Sales Event is going on. You can choose your deal, 0% and rebates just in time for Christmas. Timmy Rozier, Joy Lee, Bart Duncan, Tracy Ross, or Randy Williamson will show you the best deals. This is Sammy Dixon, and we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And remember, thank you. Thank you very much for your business. And good morning. You're listening to The Big Dog, WIFO FM in Jessup, 105.5 on your FM dial. Good morning, Butch Hubbard here with you on this one week before Christmas, 18th day of December. Looking for mostly sunny skies today as the clouds kind of burn off this morning. Breezy today, high today of around 58 degrees. And clear skies tonight, low tonight, right around freezing, around 32 tonight. Tomorrow, sunny with a high near 59. And then on Sunday, sunny with a high near 67. The Oliver Harbor level is at uh, 8 point uh, something another and falling. No, 7.3. 7.3 feet and falling. So it's falling quickly. 7.3 feet and falling. Currently here in southeast Georgia, we have 58 degrees. 806, 105.5 FM in Jessup. It is now time for the world famous Butch and Bob show brought to you by Jessup Premium Storage out here on the Waycross Highway. By Parker Insurance on Realty on Macon Street in downtown Jessup. By Mike Bridge Ford in Blackshear and BNC Collision Center in Scriven. Good morning, Bob. Morning. Well, we're supposed to have a guest this morning, but I don't know what happened to him. Maybe they'll come peep up in the door during the show. We'll find out. Let's hope. Let's hope. <laughs> Let's hope. Go get around freezing tonight, Bob. You, you're prepared for that? You ready for this nice, cool weather tonight? I guess. You guess? Nothing you can do about it. You can always talk about the weather, but nothing you can do about it, right? It's going to warm up on Saturday, so it'll be fine. Yeah. You going down to the falcons Jags game on Sunday? Yes, I am. Yes, you are. Okay. All right. Uh, that's going to be an interesting game down there. That uh, Which team do you think this means more to to, to win this game? It means more to Jacksonville. I, think, I don't think the Falcons could make the playoffs looking at the, their two games out, three to go. So they lost five in a row. So Jacksonville just won a game out of the division lead chance to win a division. So if they can get on a winning track and win these final three games, which they play Houston, which is a team ahead of them, they played them the final game of the season. So they can beat the Falcons, find a way to beat the Saints and New Orleans, and then roll out. They could win the division. And that's what I want. I want them to win the division, Pittsburgh, win the wild card, Pittsburgh at Jacksonville round one playoffs. That's what so I that's want. what you're banking on, huh? Right. That is in your wish list for Santa, huh? Yep. I told all my people up in the press box what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in with my press pass, but I'm going to have all my Steeler gear underneath, and I'm going to just go out in the stands with my terrible tie and pull for the Steelers. <laughs> be careful, Bob. Dan may be your friend down there, but certain things he can't uh, overrule. <laughs> Understands, but <laughs> he may not understand that. Though. He is a big Jaguar fan, though. but anyway, that's what that's my hope. That's what I'm pulling for. I'm pulling for the Jaguars to win the division, host the wild card, Pittsburgh, get the wild card spot, and be in Jacksonville for the round one of the playoffs. That'd be fun. Okay, 
But the Falcons, I don't know what's happened to the Falcons. That was the big topic last night. I went to the party last night. That was the big topic discussion. What's happened to the Falcons? How could they start off 5-0, look so dominant, look so good, and then just fall off the face of the earth? So I don't know what's going on with the Falcons. I mean, it'll be interesting. I was curious. That's one thing I plan to do after the game is go to the locker room and go to the press conference of the Falcons and find out right. what the sentiment is, what's going on there. They'll be interested. Win or lose, it'll be an interesting press conference to see what the Falcons have to say about their season and how it's all of a sudden just unraveled. You know, just you listen to some commentators, they say some of the players have quit on the coach, which is hard to believe. You know, you play off crazy in the first part of the season. Yeah. You know, you're, you're playing for your NFL career. <laughs> you, That's you, right. You wouldn't think anybody would quit because I'm sure they grade the film. But well, there's always somebody younger, stronger, faster yeah. trying to push you out of your job. So well, there's a lot, be of people, a lot of people hit it down for the game. You know, a lot of Falcon fans are hit it down, a lot of Jaguar fans hit it down. So it should be a nice crowd. Be interested see what the mix is. You know, if there's a lot of transits from Georgia to you know, it'd be interesting. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. See if there's more Falcon jerseys in the stands, and you know, because sometimes teams come in and just take over the stadiums, like oh, the yeah. Giants do that, the Dolphins do that, the Steelers do that. I mean, when Pittsburgh comes, it looks like a home game for them. So, <laughs> so it'd be interesting to see what the what the crowd is for the Atlanta Falcons compared to the Jaguars this Sunday. If you've got any questions or comments or subjects we you want Bob and I to touch on this morning, you can always text us at 912-427-3711, 912-427-3711. You can text us with that question, comment, or a subject you'd like for us to comment on this morning. I still got to get my Steelers in the playoffs. They're not even in. They're just one game out. Or they're really half game out. They're tied with the lead, the record. But right now Kansas City and the Jets are the two wild card teams so I need the Jets to lose tomorrow night to the Cowboys I don't know if that could happen but I'm pulling hard for the Cowboys tomorrow night okay that NFL game to Saturday and then all the games Sunday but six games tomorrow in bowl action so my job is I haven't heard half of these bowls but they, they kick Where off they tomorrow come from, man? Jeez. 41 bowl games so mm -hmm. you know, some teams are in their bowl games with a five and seven record because they couldn't find enough teams with to win six games so I tell you, there's way too many bowls when you don't have enough teams qualify for a bowl. Game. Yeah, I know when you got so many teams, so many bowls that you got to put a losing record into a bowl game. Yeah, I, just the way it is right now. But a lot of talk about the championship game, who's going to get in. You know, a lot of talk in Athens how focused are the Georgia players with all the, you know, all the changing coach and all that. Mm -hmm. and how are they going to respond? Right. Are they going to be able to get up for the game. Yeah, so. Just in our seat, listening to all the bowl talk. And, of course, this is the time of year you see all these players suspended because grades come out or right. they get in trouble. So that's what drives you crazy when you pick your bowl games and all of a sudden, two days after you put your sheet in, you hear, oh, so-and-so star player dismissed <laughs> for the bowl game. You're like, ah! He never showed up to math. <laughs> Let me get my sheet back so I can change that. That's what happens during these next couple of weeks. You'll see all these players that, right. You know, either failed or get in trouble or can't play for some reason or other in the bowl game. So, yeah. right. Had a question in here, Bob, and since you interviewed the person who found the cash can, how was the cash can found uh, for that lady, Amy Gordon, who won that $1,100, $1,055? How did that happen? How did she say she had it? She, well, she said it was at the base of the tree, but it was kind of hidden. You know, it wasn't just in clear sight, it was right. underneath some brush and some stuff, but she just. Uh, so Didn't she say she heard a clue yesterday morning or she something like that? She said the fence clue is what gave it away, you know. Uh -huh. uh, everybody was going to ballparks, but she you know, just realized there was that ballpark fence near that library, so right. she just went to the library. It was just interesting that no one else was there. That's what, because you know, I asked her that question. I said, you know, I'm just curious when you're in that area, because you know, like I said, there's last time the cash game was fine there was a bunch of people in that area but yeah you know, somebody uh, found the clues were a little more difficult this time i didn't even think about the library but if you ride by there and take a look at it and you, you know you would see how the clues could go to that yeah but the winner amy said that one of the keys to her clue was you know it's a public it's in the public place so she said public library that she just it just got all this so it just connected when she drove by the library she said i need to go by and check the library so she uh -huh. went by there walked around saw the big oak tree started looking around started kicking you know and all of a sudden there it was so. Damn. one thousand fifty five dollars richard amy gordon correct congratulations uh, to her for finding that but just it's just a matter of putting the clues together and being diligent in your hunting just very popular game it's amazing how many people yeah 
tune in, get the clues, search for the. It's just a, you know, so I'm amazed how many people out there looking for the cash can. But they're, they're, you know, you get the same thing. I mean, everywhere I go, I get bombarded. Oh, yeah. Where's the cash can? Where's the cash can? Where's, 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 where's the clue? What do you know? Like, look, I'm, I can't. I'm not eligible. I don't know where it's at. Uh, yeah. I just, now, we'll probably be back with it in, in, in May sometime. Where they, we've been doing two for a year, so maybe it'd be a good time to do it again somewhere along there. Somebody just sent a birthday wish. Happy birthday to Margie Rigdon. Margie Rigdon, 81 years old today. We love you, Granny. All right, here's a question from somebody about the Bob to you from uh, someone they want to know about the Georgia recruiting. What about Georgie Smart? Uh, uh, what about Kirby Smart and the recruiting and Eason? Recruiting's going well. I mean, Kirby Smart's one of the best recruiters in the area. I did see where several players have decommitted because they just felt an allegiance to Mark Rick. Uh, DJ Dallas, the kid from uh, Glenn Academy, decommitted yesterday. But Eason's, you know, saying for sure he's coming. You know, but as we say all the time, between me and John, the verbal commitments mean absolutely nothing. You have to wait until you know the lock can happen in a year or so. Just have to hope that Jacob Eason has been committed, verbally committed for quite some time. He's projected as the number two quarterback in the nation, and he's already verbally committed this week that he's coming. Rusted Richard LeCott from Liberty County, projected one of the best athletes in the area, you know, committed. We interviewed him this week. So Kirby Smart's an excellent recruiter. You know, it was interesting to listen to Danny Sheridan talk yesterday on Paul Feinbaum show. They were asking about the move from Kirby Smart to Georgia. He said he was an excellent hire. You know, he said if Kirby had only been there under Nick Saban's two leads for one or two years, it probably wouldn't be a good hire, but he was there nine years. He said he's definitely seen the blueprint on how to put together a, mm -hmm. a championship team. He puts together one of the best defense every year. It's an excellent hire for the University of Georgia, you know, but the question still remains. Some people are better coordinators than they are head coaches. There's a lot more entailed with a head coach, a lot more responsibilities, a lot more meetings, a lot more alumni, you know, dealing mm -hmm. with the media, the whole nine yards. So, We'll see how it all plays out and how he handles all that aspect of it. Yeah, that some people can do that, some people can't. I mean, it's amazing how much media they have to deal with when they become the head coach. And like I said they're kind of sheltered by Nick Saban. He he handles all that stuff. He handles it. <laughs> but now Kirby's the head man. He's got to deal with it. He's got to do the radio show. He's got to right. do the call-in show. I mean, that's that's something that you know that used to be the big thing on the the, the Sunday night call-in show. I remember when Jim Donnan did it, I mean, he just get irritated by people calling oh, and asking yeah. questions. He'd just be gruff and gruff, you know. That's why Rick was so good for 15 years, because Rick could just, you know. Dooley was the best, though. They call up Dooley and just you know, dog cussed him about a play and all that. And Dooley said, me, I think you're right. I think I'll put that play in next week. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, nothing ever phased Dooley, because Dooley always made the other team sound like they're going to world beaters anyway. I know. He could make 0 and 10 Vanderbilt sound like they're the, yeah. the best team ever. Yeah, so. we're going to play Sisters of the Four this week. I mean, boy, they're tough. <laughs> but some coaches can handle that stuff. Some coaches can. Some coaches let it get under their skin and just they don't survive. But, right. but Dooley was a master. Like I said, I remember listening. I just, that was used to be fun on Sunday night listening to Colin's show because mm -hmm. people all across the state call and say, Coach, why'd we do so and so and so and so? Well, I, I, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And Dooley, instead of Dooley getting up, he said, Well, you're probably right. Looking back on it, he said, I'll tell you what, we're gonna, next time we won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we'll do exactly what you thought we should do. <laughs> so they just yeah. rolled off his back. Yeah. But you see, some coaches get you know, they, they just they just get irate and get defensive. So, but we'll see how Kirby Smart handles all that. But as far as like, recruiting, you know, that's that's his forte. That you know, he's one been there. You know, that's why all that talent's at Alabama. He's he's a big responsible. You know, he's a big part of all those talented athletes at Alabama because he's their head recruiter. So he can definitely recruit. Okay. Do you know who DJ Dallas is? DJ Dallas said he wanted to play quarterback at the college level. DJ Dallas is the kid from Glenn Academy. Okay. You know, but he's not going to play quarterback at, with Easton in, in the fall. So <laughs> that might be wisely and might be committed. But I don't think they could, I don't think they ever recruited him as a quarterback. They I mean, didn't? No, I think he's just an athlete that they're going to use somewhere he's else. An athlete uh, somewhere. And he's an excellent athlete. You know. But like I said, kids have to make choices. He may, he may change his mind next week and say he's coming back. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the story I got, he was upset that nobody called him. And, you know, that Kirby had, and, you know, that Kirby said he did call him. So, you know, I don't know. You just don't know what goes on. These are teenage kids. Their minds change. You know, they change. Oh, yeah. Mind, well, like the 17, 18 year old kids, I mean, what do you expect? And like I said, just because they verbally commit means absolutely nothing until they sign on the dotted line after they graduate. That's when you know they're in the fold. Until then, 
you know, all this is just speculation. You know, mm-hmm. Eason could change his mind next week. Okay. Now you never can tell. Our, our text number, if you have any comments or questions or subjects you want us to talk about, uh, 912-427-3711, 912-427-3711. The person who said uh, DJ, Dallas, DJ Dallas wants to play quarterback at the college level, but he also texted in right after that he can't compete with Eason. So, you know, he wanted to know, but he already stated the fact that uh, he's not as good as Eason. He already knew the answer. He already knew the answer, but he wanted your opinion, Bob. People want to know your opinion. All right. Uh, someone uh, text in, Chipper Jones is joining the Braves and helping the Braves farm teams. Have you heard that? Yeah, I did. Saw that yesterday. That's good. So, you know, good to keep Chipper in the Braves family. Just a great guy. Uh, they need to use him as a hitting instructor. So they need, they need to desperately get a bit of a hitting instructor. <laughs> That'd be the job I'd give Chipper Jones. <laughs> Show these I'd, guys how to hit, I'd, Chipper. I'd really, I'd really make him player manager and get rid of Freddie Gonzalez. That's, that's exactly what I would do high on the Braves. Oh, you would? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm like Jonathan. I'm not a big Freddie Gonzalez guy. Okay. But the Braves, you know, they're just a wholesale change with the Braves. I mean, I don't know how they're going to be able to compete this year. They're just supposed to just get rid of everybody and just move into the new stadium the following year. They're supposed to make a big splash then and get a bunch of free agents at that year. So. Wouldn't you want to do it this year to get them starting well, together, you working would together? You would try to put a competitive team and get somebody as excited. You know, the question I've got, you know, how's that Atlanta fan base knowing they're moving out of that area? Mm-hmm. Or are they going to show up and support the team? What well, if they're, they're just like, moving to the other side of town. Uh, you know, it's not like they're moving away from Atlanta. Talking, talking people up there, they said it's going to be a traffic nightmare where they're moving Oh, yeah, to. definitely. They said, they said they said, you think it's bad now. They said, by the time they do that stadium where they're moved it to, the traffic's just going to be yeah, terrible. So, I don't know. And, and for us folks who live south of Atlanta, it's worse for us because it's going to be at least another 30 minutes added to your driving time, maybe 45 minutes to an hour if the traffic's bad because you got to go all the right way around the bypass there on the west side of town. I mean, I still think the George Dome's a great place to watch a game, but this, the, I've gone on the website and seen that. Vision of the new stadium there right. at Emerson. I mean, that's going. That thing's going to be gorgeous. Well, if you go to the domes, got to be something better. It's 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 nice. It's nice, it's huh? It's nice. It's going to be fun to watch a game in that stadium. It's going to compete with Jerry's World. Pretty much. Okay. And it's close to it. I mean, it's just going to. I mean, we're watching it on the video. It's just amazing what all they're going to have in there. So, just a, it's going to be a beautiful stadium for the Falcons. Okay. Arthur Blank's got plenty of money, I guess. Well, well, that sure can borrow a lot of money. So. <laughs> Both the Falcons and the Braves in a couple of years are going to be in brand new stadiums. So. That's true. That's very true. Of course, the stadium they're building for the Atlanta is just across the street there into the big parking lot over there. I guess they'll make the dome into a parking lot once they get through building this, huh? I have no idea what they're going to do. they got to have parking down there somewhere. Maybe one of those colleges, maybe Georgia State once again. You, know, you just don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know what maybe Georgia Tech wants to use it. You he know, he just don't know what they're going to use it for. Right. I still think it's a pretty good building. I mean, I did see it. Yeah, yeah, it was the same way with the, with the uh, Turner Field. I mean, you go to it, there's nothing really seems to be wrong there. Yeah, everything looks nice. I would see them implode something like that, but I still remember they imploded Three River Stadium a sad day. Yeah, same thing with um, the Fulton County Stadium. Yeah, you can see the, the wall there where, where Hank Aaron hit his – Record hitting home run. Yeah. All that right there in the parking lot. Yeah. A lot of people we've called in want to know what day they're going to burn the house down with the with the fire the fire department. Mike Deal says he'll give us that information. Apparently, okay. like, apparently a lot of people want to go. You know, yeah, it'll be a uh, spectator sport there. He joked yesterday we have weenies and marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> think we're doing that but, but a lot of people have called one and yeah. they they want to go watch it and see i think it. it'd be interesting to watch yeah it'll be you know it'll be fun to watch the training you know they use it as a training exercise with the fire department so i'm sure it would be something fun to watch or something interesting to watch anyway yeah. so so a lot of people, next week so you're right, we have that. between christmas and new year's is what i plan to do it they said when they get to the date they'll let us know so we'll pass that information along because apparently like I said I've got a lot of calls, a lot of questions, people asking when it's going to be because they want to go watch it. Okay. Well, I live in the neighborhood over there, so I definitely want to watch it. Now, another question that's uh, text into us here is, um, how's the Wayne County Yellow Jacket baseball team looking this year for this upcoming spring? Well, the big question on every baseball team is pitching. Uh-huh. We lost a J.D. Paul and a P. Phillips. Oh, okay. So, so pitchers so, is what we're looking yeah, for. Pitching is going to be the big question mark. Uh-huh. I, got, I saw Wesley last night 
was the Payton's daddy. I said, you know, last year when J.D. Paul and Payton Phillips went out on the mine, it was 99% guaranteed win. I mean, mm -hmm. That's how good those pitchers were. I mean, they were just – so trying to replace that is going to be a tough task. So that, that's where it starts. Who's going to step up in the pitching department? You know, you got Zach Maynard, Brooks Parker, four times, and you got several – Candidates. The question is, who's going to step up, be the number one pitcher? Who's going to be number two? You know, you know, what kind of pitching will they have throughout the season? Okay. And can they can they hit? You know, the last couple of years the hitting's last been, years been, hitting. been lack in that department. So, but they've got a lot. Of, you know, the big thing's going to be. The, you know, the, I talked to Coach McDonald a couple weeks ago. They got 63 signed up for 30 spots. Okay. Uh, you do the math. That's 30 kids ain't making baseball team. Right. So, that's going to be an interesting. Competition always makes them better. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting aspect right off the bat. But pitching will be what they have to, you know, try to shore up. And you know, that's 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 two big losses. I mean, that's a lot of talent that left the mound last year. Mm -hmm. Like I said, those two guys were light side. That, those those were fun games watching JD and Peyton Phillips pitch all last year. I mean, because they both had excellent stuff and they both had nasty breaking pitches and they could just. I said, when you put them out there on the mind, it was 99% guaranteed we're going to win this game. So yep. I don't think we have that luxury this year. <laughs> you know. Okay. I'm sure someone's going to step up. The question is, who's going to step up? Well, we'll find out. Come in spring. All right. Uh, what is the name of the street, the house they're going to burn? Is on? Do you remember? Littlefield Street. Littlefield Street. Okay. Right. It's and been over there for, like I said, yeah, it's just a sad story. Like I said, they started building the house. They never finished the house. No one's ever occupied the house. It's been a eyesore in that neighborhood. It's been a place of vandalism. It's been a place where criminals hang out. It's just been a nightmare for those neighbors who have, Ten years. Who have asked yeah. constantly for help. But like the city said Tuesday, they had to jump through hoops. They had to go through the legal process. They even had to go to environmental court to make sure everything's on the up and up. So it was just a long, tedious, costly process for everybody involved. So. The city commissioners, Don Dart and Ricky Reddy, voiced their frustration with the people who began the house. They said they begged and pleaded for a resolution, but just could not get one. So this is where it comes to, that they're going to finally just destroy the house, burn it down, and just, like I said, hopefully they'll have somebody else purchase that property and build a house well, yeah. down the road. Well, Littlefield is located in, in the city of Jessup, right off of Harper Street. And so uh, that's where it's at. All right. But... Must be something to watch because I said I'm getting a lot of people wanting to do it. I thought my deal, maybe you can sell tickets. It could be a fundraiser. It could be a fundraiser. That's right. Yeah. You, you, I mean, the, where the road is, there's only one, you know, two ways in, two ways out on one road, a little field. So you could. Once again, if you have any questions or comments or subjects you want Bob and I to talk about this morning on the world famous Butch and Bob show, show here on WIFO, you can text us at 912 427 3711. Just like the city's using as a positive as i said those fire department employees they need that training and this is just a great training exercise for this fire department so mm -hmm. they're organizing and that's that's what it's that's what's being used right. for something right. positive for the fire department well they got a lot of training out here a little over 10 years ago didn't they <laughs> the station burned down how do you feel wayne county will uh fate next year moving to 5a uh so excited to see our boys mature and play next year I can't, you know. I said the team was very young this past year. A lot of talent coming back. I think they'll be fine. I said, uh, Ware County, of course, will be the tough team in that region football wise. They get an excellent football program, but that rivalry over the years has been fun. And I said, Wayne County and Ware County's. I said, I just like the, I like the rivalries in the region. I like the fact that South Effingham's coming back. That's a good rivalry in baseball, football, and softball. You got. Weir County, a good rivalry in mm -hmm. baseball, football. Statesboro has always been a good rivalry. Right. And I said, uh, New Hampstead's in the region with us. Don't know much about them. I just know they're you know, just an up-and-coming school. They're going to start competing in region football as well as the other sports. They competed pretty well in the other, some of the other sports as well. So, Especially the spring sports. I like, I like the region. I like the rivalries. And I said, I'm glad Weir, Statesboro, and South Effingham are in there with us. So I'm looking forward to it. But I think Wayne County will be fine. I said, a lot of talent. Uh, the they're going to running backs with sophomore freshmen. Now they're going to be juniors and sophomores. you got a freshman quarterback going to be a sophomore. Just just a lot of talent coming back from that team. I mean, Joe and I talked about it every Friday night. You know, there's so many sophomores and freshmen and you know, juniors out there. What a lot of seniors. freshman team. What a lot of seniors out there. So yep. I think we'll be fine. Looking forward to the season. I just hope they can keep those rivalries. You know, they got a lot of options with the five teams in the region I said I think Glenn Academy said they're already locked up ready to still play us Appling County still wants to play us so yeah, yeah it'll be fun to see what the non-region schedule
schedule was like. And right. I said, we're still begging for Pierce County to hook up. We'd love to play them. Be a great money gate, but mm-hmm. haven't heard if we got them yet, but it'll be fine. All right, a final question here. What do you see is the biggest thing that the uh, commissioners are working on for Jessup? Now, I don't know if they mean Jessup commissioners. Let's take both of them, Jessup commissioners and Wayne County commissioners. What do you see the biggest thing for them working on starting next year? I have the recycling thing's the big issue right now. I mean, okay. that's the, that and the garbage issue. Those are the two big issues facing the city of look. Jessup. City of Jessup, you know, they're trying, they're taking, in fact, they're taking proposals right now for the, when I said they've got that deal with the Wayne Service Center to take over the, they drop off station voluntarily, but for their current station, they're taking proposals at this time. So, yeah, and the city's requesting proposals to operate the convenience center located at 555 North First Street for disposals of large items such as furniture and mattresses. If you need more information or obtain the RFP specs, call city manager Mike Deal at 427-1313. Proposals must be submitted by January 4th. The city reserves the right to accept or reject any proposal. So okay. that's the big issue facing the city is they're recycling and the garbage and, you know, all that. Okay. How do you, I'm not really sure. Not sure yet. We'll find out the first uh, meeting of the year then. Well, Bob, we got to end up the Butch and Bob show this morning. Have a great weekend. All right, the world-famous Butch and Bob show brought to you by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear, BNC Collision Center in Scriven, Jessup Premium Storage out here on the Waycross Highway, and by Parker Insurance and Realty located on Macon Street in downtown Jessup across from the Heritage Bank. WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup. It's 8.30. Let's check in the latest news from Fox News Radio. <laughs> Fox News Radio, I'm Dave Anthony. We cannot give in to fear or change how we live our lives. The New York Times reports.